Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the first uh, Q&A session uh, for the online NBT. My name is Emlyn Ballerin. Um, I'm the operations manager at the National Benchmark Test. And in background, um, we have the, the MBT team who will try and answer all of your questions as they may arise if you put them into the Q&A section. This presentation specifically deals with the simulation. And the simulation, in essence, is a, a practice run for, for your test session. And all of the processes that are outlined below um, are relevant to the test session itself. So this presentation is divided into four parts. Part one, uh, I'll introduce the session and its outcomes. Part two, we'll go through the test taking preparation. Part three, I will deal with uh, the, free, the most frequently asked questions. And lastly, we will look at your questions and try and answer them as best as we possibly can. So what is the point of this session? This session hopes to advise you and give you knowledge around the MBT online testing process and specifically the simulation process, which of course is compulsory and needs to be completed before your test day, but we'll get to that later. It's also, this session is also here to answer your questions about NBT online testing. Uh, as a writer of the MBT, you're faced with the option of choosing either the online, the MBT online, or the pencil and paper form of the National Benchmark Test. And I'm going to very quickly go through um, some of the issues around uh, both of those forms of the test. Firstly, you can be absolutely confident that the tests are equilibrated, so there is no difference in writing the online or the pencil and paper form you should choose the test form that suits you best. There's no advantage to you um, from um, the test perspective in writing one or the other. They are of equal difficulty. Obviously, the online test is convenient because you would normally write the test at home, but you will need to have a computer that meets the minimum specification. And, and this is important, you need to have access to stable internet with sufficient bandwidth and data, and importantly, uninterrupted power. Because as you know, we are uh, on occasions having to deal with load shedding. Uh, we've been extremely lucky, lucky up until now this year, but I suspect that may change as the year progresses and as we go into winter. You may prefer to write the test um, using the pe pencil and paper form, uh, in a physical venue, in which case, from our website, you should book your test in a venue closest to you on a date that suits you. And pencil and paper test sessions are always unproblematic. They are very run of the mill. You go into a venue, you sit down, you're given a physical paper and you answer it. But the important thing is here is that you have options. So you can choose either online or pencil and paper and you have numerous test dates to choose from. You'll see those test dates highlighted in yellow. Those are our online test, test dates, and all the others, including the ones in green, are at physical pencil and paper venues. Those in green are Sunday sessions. So you have lots of options. If the, if the online uh, test environment is not for you, book on the pencil and paper. You have plenty of dates to do so. So I'm going to assume that you're going to write online, and I'm going to go through some of the things which you will experience as an online MBT writer. Firstly, you will receive communication from us, and you will receive it by email. It is absolutely essential that when you registered for your MBT on the MBT website, that you put in an a email address which you use, which is current, and which you check regularly, because most of the communication that you receive from us will be via that um, email address. And here is the email that you will have received if you're registered for the 
11th of May. Um, this email provides you some background information. For example, your username is your MBT reference number. That's extremely important. And, by, and for that, I'm referring to the test platform. And your initial default password as you enter the test platform is also your MBT reference number. This communication outlines what is required to write the MBT online. An important piece of information is that you may not wear headphones, earphones, or earplugs during the test. You have to have a computer which is equipped with a webcam, a working webcam, and microphone. And as I said earlier, a stable internet connection. If you don't have a South African ID book or foreign pass passport, you may get an affidavit from your closest police station with a stamped affidavit with a, uh, with a picture of yourself attached to that stamped affidavit and your birth certificate. But we'll go through that process a bit later. So the online test environment does not require a high-speed internet connection, but it does require a minimum level of one megabit per second. I mean, that is really low um, these days. Um, an entry-level wired fiber or 3G connection is more than adequate, okay? The data usage is relatively low, and you will require approximately half a gig for each test. So to be on the safe side, have a little bit more available than uh, one gig per test. Your laptop or computer has to meet the minimum specifications. And for noting is that you may not use a cell phone to do the test. You may not use an iPad and tablets are not supported. Okay, so the minimum operating system for your computer, and this has changed from last year. The minimum operating system now is Windows 10 and upwards. And for MacBooks, Mac iOS 10.15 or higher. Please do note that. Windows 10 has been around now for almost a decade, so most computers should be running on, at the very least, Windows 10. You must have a working microphone integrated to uh, either the laptop or desktop. There is a minimum resolution for web cameras of 640 by 480. That's very low resolution, and it's almost assured that any machine that you're using has, um, has that resolution. You must have a minimum of four gigs of RAM. Again, that's pretty in entry level. So for optimal uh, performance on the test day, um, we recommend a connection speed of six megabits per second down and three megabits up. Okay, so that's slightly higher than what the minimum requirement is. But as I said, that's pretty much approximates a 3G or a entry level fiber connection. Um, the test platform does not allow multiple monitors or touch screens. And when you go into the lockdown browser, again, I'll deal with that later, it will shut down that functionality. Computer settings and recommended browsers. Firstly, and this is very important, because you're going to be required to download a piece of software called the lockdown browser, you, if your, um, if your admin, uh, if your computer has an admin password, you will be prompted for that password. So if you've borrowed a computer, you must check that you have the admin password because you may be prompted to, uh, to use that when you download the lockdown browser. The two, the two recommended browsers are Google Chrome and Firefox. And we do require you to use one or the other of those in order to have a good test experience. It's your responsibility as the writer to ensure that your webcam is operational and that your microphone is working and that when you um, install the lockdown browser, you enable access to those peripherals. The test platform does have a built-in communication or chat fu function, so you're able to send um, queries to our consultants um, during the simulation, during office hours, and during the test throughout the entire test period. Please ensure if you have a laptop 
that <clears throat> your router or mobile hotspot remains connected at all times, um, that your laptop is sufficiently charged in the event that we have uh, load shedding, and that if you're using a hotspot that you have sufficient battery power on the day. Okay, the simulation. As I said, the, sim the purpose of the simulation is to allow you to familiarize yourself with the online test environment in exactly the same way that you would do so on the actual test day. So if you manage the simulation, you should have no issues on the test day. Because the simulation um, ensures that you have experience in the test platform, it is compulsory. If you do not complete the simulation by the deadline, you will not be allowed to write the test on the test day. So it must be done before the Wednesday prior to the test. You will receive reminders if you haven't done so. But um, I must stress that if you do not complete the three parts of the simulation, which include the photo ID verification process, that's when you, um, when uh, the test platform checks that you and your ID booklet or card match. Um, that is compulsory. It's compulsory that you complete the bio information form, okay, which is your personal details, and that happens before, um, <clears throat> sorry, after the lockdown browser is downloaded, and you must complete the sample test questions so that we know that you know how to answer the questions under the lockdown browser. OK, so you have to complete all three of those steps for the simulation to be successful. The test day. So on the test day, you will be required to log in no later than 8.30. That allows you sufficient time uh, to deal with any issues that you may experience with a lockdown browser. Uh, even though you would have done it in the in the simulation, um, you never know. It is a few days later, you may have forgotten. And this just gives you a bit of extra time in order to download the lockdown browser properly, to ensure that your camera is working, um, and the test itself will start at nine o'clock sharp. Okay, so the AQL is always write, written first in the morning, and the afternoon session, if you're writing mathematics, if you registered and you wish to write mathematics, that will start at two o'clock sharp. You will not be able to access the test prior to the start time, and if you entered the platform early, you may need to refresh at the test page, and that uh, requires you pressing F5 or Control F5, depending on your, on your computer. Um, and for Max, uh, Command F5. So each test, the AQL and the maths, is approximately three hours long. And if there are any changes to the timing of the test, these will be communicated to you for specific test dates. But generally, that does not happen. You as the writer are responsible for ensuring that you adhere to all rules and requirements. If you break any of those rules, or if you do not meet the requirements of the test session, we may need to invalidate your test. And unfortunately, we can take no responsibility for failure of your computer or, per or peripheral equipment. Okay, so you are solely responsible to check that your computer is working properly and that you adhere to all the test rules and the requirements for the test. So I'd like to remind you that the test is undertaken in a secure proctored online environment, which means that you will be monitored throughout the test by your webcam and your microphone to ensure that you follow all testing procedures. Your entire test session is recorded for the purpose of ensuring test security. So please do ensure that you comply with all the test rules and requirements to avoid the invalidation of your test. Now, a full set of online test rules may be found on the MBT website. You'll find on the homepage a link there, and I do urge you to look at the test rules, to read them carefully before the test day. Okay, 
part two. And we're going to go through the test taking preparation. Um, this part is going to be in the form of a video that we've recorded. This video is available on YouTube at um, the link that's shown there. But if you just Google, um, if you just search for the MBT on YouTube, you will find our channel and you will find um, this video on how to prepare, prepare for the MBT online testing sessions. How to prepare for the MBT online testing sessions. Completing the test simulation. The test simulation is accessed through the web address ctap.edtest.ai. This address was provided to you in all emails sent to you prior to the test. Please note that only Google Chrome and Firefox browsers are supported, and you should be using a laptop or a desktop computer with a functional webcam to complete the photo verification process. When you log in, you will need your MBT reference number and the, the default password provided to you. Your MBT reference number is your username and starts with 931. The default password is also your MBT reference number. Once you have logged in, you will be directed to the ID verification page. Please follow the on-screen instructions carefully. You may be prompted to share your camera. Please allow this. You will be prompted to take a photo of yourself first. Please ensure that your face is clear and in the center of the frame. Then press take photo. You will be given the opportunity to review the photo. And if it is clear, then press continue with the process. Or you may take a new picture. You will then be required to take a picture of your photo ID. Place your photo ID in front of the camera and in the center of the frame. Make sure that the document occupies the entire space marked with the yellow line and then click capture. You will be given the opportunity to review the photo. And if it is clear and readable, you should press continue with the process. If the photo of your photo ID is unclear, you must take a new picture. If you are struggling to capture the photo, please choose the manual verification on the third attempt and the MBT team will verify your photos for you. If you do not have a South African ID booklet or foreign passport and need to use your birth certificate for ID verification, you will need a, an affidavit from the police, including a recent ID photograph that confirms your identity. Please present the affidavit to the camera during the verification instead of the ID. On the third attempt, you will be given the option of a manual verification. Choose this option, but you need to be sure that the photo of you and the affidavit are clear and readable, or it will still be rejected by the reviewer. You will be notified if the photo ID verification has been successful. You will then be directed to the welcome page. You will be pre presented with a declaration which acknowledges that the test session will be recorded for security purposes and to ensure that all test requirements are adhered to. You will need to accept this in order to continue with the test simulation. You will at this point also be asked to change your password. Please enter a secure password and make a note of this. From the welcome page, you will be prompted to download the lockdown browser. If you are using a Windows machine, choose the download for Windows link. If you are using a Mac, 
use the download for Mac link. Once you have clicked on the link, the lockdown browser will begin to download. You may be prompted to save the file. The download will be saved to your downloads folder. Once the download is complete, please double click on the lockdown browser file. This will start the installation of the lockdown browser. You will be prompted to choose a language. And when you click next, the install shield will show you the progress of the installation. Please click the finish button when this is completed. Return to the welcome page and press start. The lockdown browser will then load and you will have a blue screen with the lock in the center as this occurs. If you have any other software running, you will be prompted to close this. You will be prompted for each software program that remains open. Once this is completed, you will be directed to the test page. On the test page, you will see two items, the bio and the sample test. Click on the bio and complete the biographical questions. When this is completed, click on the sample test. The test SAM01 is a sample test consisting of five questions. The test is made up of two sections, mathematics, which contains two questions, and academic and quantitative literacy, which contains three questions. All the questions are multiple choice, and each question has four answer options. There is only one correct answer for each question, and you should choose the most appropriate answer. On the instruction page, there is also a link to the formula sheet. This link will also be provided on the actual MBT MAT test. You will need to complete the SAM01 test as part of your MBT simulation test process. You may navigate between pages by using the buttons at the bottom of the, of the page, which allow you to return to the previous page, to review, which marks the page you're on, or you may use the next button to progress to the next page. When you reach the end of the test, you will be prompted to check your answers. And only once you have checked your answers, press end the test. You will be notified of how many questions you have answered, and you will be asked to confirm that you wish to submit the exam right now. Press accept to continue or cancel. You will see on the screen that your responses are being sent and do not do anything further until this process has been completed. Once your responses have been sent, you will see the screen. You have finished your SAM01 test and congratulations. Having completed the test, you may now exit the lockdown browser. I really hope that's been helpful to you. Um, there are two things I'd like to reiterate here. One of them is that when you go through the photo ID verification process that you've just seen there, because you can see what the camera is taking, you must ensure that it is clear. If it's not clear and if it's not readable, then it will not be accepted, even if you go to manual verification. The manual verification is done by, by humans. We'll look at it and if we cannot see your ID number or if we cannot see um, the, the, um, the text and your name and your photo on an affidavit, we cannot accept it and we will reject it. And you will get an email advising you that it's been rejected. The second thing that I'd like to reiterate 
is assuming that you use the same computer for your simulation and on the test day, you only need to have loaded up, uh, uploaded the lockdown browser once. Okay, so you only have to save it to your computer once. Once you've installed it, it's on that machine. So when you go back into the test platform and you get to the welcome uh, welcome page, you press start and you'll go straight into um, the test page. Okay, so if you're using the same computer, the lockdown browser only needs to be downloaded and installed once. So let's have a look at some of your uh, frequently asked questions. And if you hear me repeating some of the stuff I've mentioned before, that's fine because these are things which come up over and over. Okay, so login questions. These are the kinds of questions that we get asked all the time. Firstly, only Google Chrome and Firefox browsers are supported. So please make sure that you use one of those, whether you're using a Windows machine or a Mac. Okay, you have to use a laptop or a desktop computer with webcam and microphone. You can't use tablets or phones. They are not supported and they're not permitted. And your, user, your username for the test platform, remember, is the MBT reference number. And the password, your default password is your MBT reference number, but once you've gone through the registration, through the um, through the initial process and the simulation, you will have changed that to your own unique password, which you will hopefully have kept record of. Okay, so what is your MBT reference number? That's the number which starts with 931, which you received when you registered on the MBT website, mbt.ac.za website. Okay, and your default password is that same MBT reference number, which you use on initial login. If you've changed your password, then it is what you've changed it to. If you've forgotten it, there is a forgot password option on the front page of the test platform. So where did you get your MBT reference number? Well, you got it when you registered on the MBT website, when you booked your test. And you can access this, if you've forgotten, by going back to the MBT website. That's mbt.ac.za. And you log into that profile using your South African ID number or passport number and the password you created when you made your um, when you created your pass your profile and made your booking. Okay, so why can't you log in to the test platform? Well, it is pos possible that the password you're using is incorrect. Um, so use the forgot password function and you'll get an email sent to you with a link to change your password. If that's not working, you can always send us a request in the chat, in the online chat uh, facility. Remember that the simulation, which must be completed before your test day, is available up till the last weekend, the last, sorry, my apologies, the last Wednesday prior to your test date. And that's Wednesday, 12 noon. Now, if you look over here on the right hand side, you will see a list of the MBT test dates. And in the second column, the simulation closing date. This is extremely important because if you don't complete it, you can't write. So for the 11th of May, the closing date for the simulation is the 8th of May, Wednesday, the 8th of May. And the same goes for the 22nd of June, 19th of June is the last day that you may complete the simulation for that test day. Now, another thing, once you've completed a simulation successfully, now remember, the simulation includes the ID verification process, the bio, where you enter your personal information, and also the sample questions, okay? So three things which need to be completed. Once you've completed it successfully, that's good for the rest of the test cycle. So if you choose to write the MBT again in the online environment, you do not need to complete the simulation. Okay, photo and ID verification questions. 
Devices, okay, laptops, desktops with functional webcam and uh, microphones are required. You must make the camera and the microphone accessible to the, um, to the lockdown browser, which you'll be prompted to do. If you can't complete um, the ID verification process, for some reason it's not accepting the picture of yourself and your ID document, then choose the manual verification on the third attempt. Remember, you've got to go through this three times and then you'll be prompted to accept manual verification. And then as I said, if everything looks good to us and our team, if everything's uh, readable, if your picture's clear, then we will um, accept it. How do I make sure that my camera or microphone is working? Well, it's different for different devices. If your camera doesn't switch on or switches off during the test, it means that there's some setting on your device preventing it from functioning properly. And this can be a number of things. This can be security software. Um, this can be your, um, your own browser settings in Chrome or Firefox. And my suggestion to you is try Googling your device because there are many thousands of devices that you may be using on the test day. Try and Google your device and camera settings and you will find a solution for your specific problem. Secondly, check your browser settings, check your device settings, check your antivirus settings in relation to the camera. If you have no South African ID or foreign passport, you will require an affidavit from the police, a stamped affidavit, I must stress, from the police, including a recent ID photograph that confirms your identity that confirms your identity. And you must present that affidavit to the camera during the verification process instead of your ID. And you will be forced to go through to the third attempt and you must then choose manual verification. Again, I'm going to reiterate, your affidavit, the picture of the affidavit and yourself must be clear and legible. Otherwise it will be rejected by the reviewer. So check the photo panel if it's not clear you must redo it. Okay, you receive an email telling you that you have not completed the simulation. Now, you may have gone through the ID verification process and then exited and thought that you were done. No, there are three parts, the photo and ID verification, the bio and the sample tests, and you must do all three. Okay, if you have done all of that and you've still received an email, please check the date and time that the email was received. Because what we do is we check at midnight the previous day to see who has or has not completed the simulation. And then the following morning, that is when we send the email. So let's say you did your simulation um, very late at night or early that morning, you may still receive the email because we, we base our emails on the data from the previous day up until midnight and then send that email. So you may very well have completed it um, and you may still receive that email. Just check the date and time and if you've done your simulation after that time, then don't worry about it. Lockdown browser questions. Okay, why do you need the lockdown browser? And quite often uh, we get queries saying, I'm not happy downloading um, this software onto my dad's machine or onto my laptop. Unfortunately, the lockdown browser is a critical requirement for the online test session. You cannot do the online test without having first downloaded the lockdown browser because the lockdown browser provides test security during your online test. So what the lockdown browser does is it shuts down every other piece of software on your computer temporarily so that you cannot print, copy, or go to another website. Everything is locked down until your test is submitted for marking and you have exited. You only need to download and install it once during the simulation process unless 
you take your test on a different device, in which case you will need to download it again. But we always recommend that you use the same machine for your simulation and your test. And the reason for that is because if you're going to experience any problems, you would have experienced it during the simulation. If you change devices, you may end up with a whole new bunch of problems on the test day. And that is not the best time to have problems. I'm sure you'll agree. How do I know which lockdown browser I will need and how do I download and install it? So if you're using a Windows device, it's quite simple. You download um, the lockdown browser from the link for Windows. If you're using a Mac device, then download from the link for Macs. So why is the lockdown browser asking me to enter a password? Okay, that will only happen if your computer uh, requires administrator rights to download new software. Okay, so again, just check um, and make sure you have the administrator password available should you need it in order to download the lockdown browser. Okay, the lockdown browser has requested me to close chrome.exe or any other application. You must allow the lockdown browser to close any open applications. Otherwise, you will not be able to proceed to the test page and it will keep prompting you. If the application does not close automatically, you may need to exit and restart your device. Okay, there may be plugins in your Google Chrome or Firefox that keep certain components like the Google Remote Desktop active, running in background, and you'll be prompted to shut those down. You may need to then exit from the lockdown browser process and remove Google Remote Desktop from your computer. Okay, test simulation questions. What is the simulation? So the test simulation involves setting up your profile. Okay, that's the ID verification process and preparing for the MBT tests by downloading the lockdown browser and completing the bio and sample tests. You need to complete the bio and sample tests as part of your MBT preparation process. Where do I find the bio and sample test? Okay, so once you've gone through the ID verification process, once you've done, downloaded the lockdown browser and installed it, once you've clicked on start, you are then taken to the test page where you will see the sample test and the bio. It is exactly the same process on the test day. And once you've done it once, you should be able to do it quite easily on the test day. How do I know that I've completed the simulation? Okay, completing the bio and the sample test means that you've completed the simulation. Okay, these tests are not scored. They're there just to give you the experience of what you need to do on the test day and to allow you to check that everything is set up correctly on your device. Can I do the simulation using my phone? Can I do the test on my phone? Unfortunately, the answer is an unequivocal no. You may not use your test to complete the simulation. And you also need to be sure to be using Google Chrome or Firefox on either a laptop or a desktop with webcam and microphone. And if you do not have Chrome or Firefox, please do take the time to download them. Edge, Safari are known to give problems uh, with the verification processes so they are not recommended. So please make sure that you use only the recommended browsers. Okay, I've entered the lockdown browser and it shows mathematics questions as well as um, language and quantitative literacy questions in the sample. The sample tests are just that, it's just a sample. It's not sub subject specific and it has two maths questions and three AQL questions. They're there um, only uh, for explanatory purposes and to give you a sense of what to experience on the test day. Okay, so don't worry that you see two maths questions in the sample. If you haven't registered for maths on the test day, you will only see the AQL, you will not see AQL and maths. If you don't wish to answer the maths questions, just click through them or just pick an answer. It doesn't really matter, they're not scored. 
OK, the maths in the test shows strange symbols or tells me maths processing error or my maths test does not show diagrams. OK, this is a problem which occurs when you have poor or unstable Internet connectivity. And the simple um, way to deal with that is to press refresh or control F5 or command R on a Mac. And if that doesn't work, but it does generally work, by the way, and you can do it several times until until it displays properly, then you may need to exit the lockdown browser, go to the home page and enter the test again. But that only happens when you have very poor internet connectivity. So you could also try and get a bit closer to your router or closer to your, uh, your hotspot and ensure that you have a better signal. OK, you can find additional FAQs and their answers on the MBT website under the FAQ section. In addition to a lot of other information, um, including some exemplar questions on the types of uh, questions that you are likely to uh, get or um, see on the test day. So I do encourage you to go to the MBT website and look at all of the information that's, that is available there to you. And lastly, part four, your questions. Now, these are questions that we've uh, lifted from the Q&A section of these presentations. And in addition to that, uh, our team are in background answering uh, some of the new questions as they come in. So starting with the first one, can we take the simulation test at any time or is there a specific time? Nope, you can take the simulation test any time, but only during the period um, that it is available up until the last Wednesday, 12 noon before your test date. After that, the simulation will remain closed until after um, after the, the following test date, and then it'll be open again until the following Wednesday prior to the next online test date. Okay, so you can pretty much do the simulation anytime you like, but the critical thing is here, it must be done before the Wednesday, 12 noon, before your test date. What can I do to write the simulation test? Because when I click on the link, nothing shows up. This probably um, refers to the fact that you have not downloaded and installed the lockdown browser. So when you click on the start button, nothing will happen. So just go back, check that you've downloaded the lockdown browser. You can do that by going into your downloads folder. Uh, double click on it to make sure that it's installed. And then when you return to the welcome page, click on start and you should be redirected to the test page. The last time I wrote the test, I was told it was going to be three hours, but each test's timing was confusing. Okay, so each test, the AQL test and the maths test, each are three hours each. Okay, but the AQL test is written in sections, whereas the maths test is a single section. So the AQL test has seven parts with timing for each of those seven parts. And there are approximately 140 questions in total. Okay. The maths test on the other half, on the other, on, on, on the other hand, is made up of a single part or section which has 60 questions in it. Okay, for those who've written the simulation ready. Are the questions on one subject or it depends on what you signed up for? OK, as I said, sample test is made up um, of uh, math questions and AQL questions because it is just that. It's just a sample. It's just there as an example of what you're going to uh, expect on the day. Um, if you've registered for maths on the test day, you will see your AQL and maths. If you've only registered for AQL, you'll only see your AQL. 
are we allowed to have a pen and paper with us when doing the online test to work out the maths? Yes, you may. You may have a pencil and a blank sheet of paper. A blank sheet of paper here. No calculators are permitted. If you use a calculator or if you have any other material other than a blank sheet of paper, you will be invalidated. Is it possible to write the test if my computer does not have a camera? No, you may not. Your camera must have a camera and microphone. Uh, what happens if um, you're not able to complete the simulation due to trial examinations currently taking place? Unfortunately, the simulation is compulsory. And because it is available to you um, from pretty much uh, 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 mid-April through until uh, end of uh, mid-October, there's really not much reason why you should not be able to complete the simulation. The simulation is only not available from the Wednesday prior to a test date until after the test has been completed. Okay, so you have more than adequate opportunities to complete the simulation. And the whole simulation process really doesn't take long. I've got here that it should take no more than 20 to 30 minutes. But frankly, if everything goes quickly, it may take as little as five minutes. Um, if you don't have a laptop, you won't be able to write. Unfortunately, that is the case. You need to have a, a laptop or a, or, a, or a computer with working webcam and a microphone. If you really don't have access to any computing facilities, then your option is to write uh, the pencil and paper test. And there are many, many venues nationally, and there are 20 um, pencil and paper test dates that you can choose from. So that is your option if you can't write in the online environment. Do you fail immediately if load shedding happens? So while you're writing the test, if you get load shed for a short space of time, and let's, let's say you have an inverter and it kicks in very quickly afterwards, um, but you get exited from the panel, uh, sorry, from the, from, from the test platform because you uh, very briefly lose internet connectivity or power to your machine, don't worry, log back in and you will be able to carry on where you left off. But that only is applicable if you are exited from the from the test platform for a relatively short space of time, okay. If you if you have a problem for an extended period, you will not be able to complete the MBT tests, and you will need to rebook your test, okay. But it is a very robust test platform. Um, it does allow you the opportunity to go back in and carry on where you left off. So it does save your responses up until the point that you lost um, your internet connectivity. So if you get uh, if you get bumped out because of uh, load shedding, do re-enter as soon as possible and you should be able to continue. I must stress that because this is a timed test, your timing continues. Okay, so you are timed from the time that you first enter into a section until it is submitted. I have maths lit at school, but unfortunately the MBT test didn't give me a um, didn't give me a maths lit option. So now do I only write the AQL or should I write both? So the short answer is if you haven't done um, full full maths, then you should only write the AQL. But really the the decision to write AQL and maths is determined by what the university to which you are applying requires. So if they require you to write maths, for example, if you're going into a science uh, into a science program, you have to write maths. But generally, um, if you only have maths lit, you probably only need to write the AQL. Um, I'm going to skip the next one. Uh, OK, can I write in an unfinished house, like without painting or plaster? Yes, you may do so so long as there is good lighting in the room. And I think this is a very good opportunity to just very quickly recap about what is required for um, the room in which you write. It's important that you have good lighting so that we can see your face clearly throughout your test. 
So be careful of light coming in from windows, um, causing a glare. Um, also make sure that your camera is set so that we can see you clearly. You know, we don't want to see just the top half of your face. We want to see your entire face. Um, also make sure that you have a blank wall behind you. OK, so your your room does not have to be um, special. It just needs to have adequate lighting and a blank wall behind you so that we can see you clearly throughout the test session. Do you download the lockdown browser on the MBT day? No, you don't unless you are using a different computer on the test day. What is the administrator password? Um, this is the device. This is the device password. OK, so this is the administrator password that's set up um, by the owner of the machine in order to increase security. You will need to know that password in order to download the lockdown browser. Not all computers have an administrator password set on them. Um, so you may not uh, experience that problem, but you certainly will find out during the simulation. I had to close the I had to close Chrome to continue with the simulation, but when I closed the window, it kicked me out of the program. This is most likely a problem with uh, the Chrome extensions. Um, so you need to follow the steps to remove those extensions or move over to Firefox if you're unable to resolve the problem. Often if you're having uh, difficulties in one browser, if you try and use Firefox or you know, vice versa, Chrome, Often those difficulties disappear. However, I've given you a link here. Um, there is support at the Respondus website, that is the lockdown browser um, manufacturer, um, and they will give a full list of common problems experienced, and you should be able to sort out your problems there. Is an asylum seeker is Asylum Seeker documentation applicable for validation on the test day? Absolutely. Um, in addition to those people that use a police affidavit with a recent ID photo confirming identity, we also accept official home affairs Asylum Seeker, asylum seeker or refugee um, documentation, so long as it, as it has a clear um, photo on it and that when you go through the verification process we are able to read the detail on that affidavit. Um, when we do the manual verification we are able to blow up your document. Okay, So what's important is that the picture is clear and that we can see all of the document. Okay, So we then will look at it We'll blow it up a bit and we will check to see that we can see that it is you, that we can see the ID number or temporary ID number, and that you match the photo. If I wear glasses, should I wear them when I take the ID photo on the platform? Ideally, you should remove your glasses, but if you have glasses worn on your ID photo, you may also use your glasses uh, when you take your photo. What if I've completed the ID and photo process of the simulation, but my ID photo was rejected? If, you're, if your ID photo has been rejected, um, you should receive a email advising you that the manual verification was rejected, and then you will need to go back into the platform and redo the ID verification part of the simulation. Now it's really important that that is completed before the Wednesday 12 noon um, before your test date. That's why it really is in everybody's interest to complete the simulation well in advance of your test day so that we don't end up with a situation where we prevent you from writing. Can you leave the AQL test before the three hours are up if you finish? Yes. Um, as I said, Sections of time for the AQL. Um, if you complete them in less than the allowed time, and you move on to the next section, and you finish the whole, the whole, uh, the whole thing in less than three hours, absolutely, you may submit your tests and leave. 
you will not be able to start the maths early because that starts at two sharp regardless. OK, so if you finish early, that's fine. Make sure that you've submitted everything correctly. Do not leave the platform without submitting your responses and you're prompted and you're given a, um, a confirmation that your responses have been submitted. Make sure that all happens. If it has happened, then you can leave and then get back into the platform before your math test at two o'clock. Is the MBT specifically for the university I've applied for? Uh, this is an important question. We actually provide your um, results to all universities that request them. So you don't have to do anything. Once you've written the MBT and you've got a score, those scores will be provided to universities to which you apply and they will come to us and ask for those scores and we will provide them. As a rewriting writer that has already registered two times, it appears I cannot register for the third time. How will I be able to write the math test since I was told uh, I experienced connectivity issues on my first test? OK, when you get these kinds of problems, when you can't register because you've already been registered twice, you have to contact the MBT help desk. That is the only way that you're going to get um, support here. And you can do that either by email or by phoning uh, the help desk number. You'll find all of that information on the MBT website. I'm going to skip through some of these because we're getting close to the end of our time here. Um, can we get up for a bathroom break during the test? Yes, you're allowed a five minute bathroom break. No more. Um, my computer is set up at a desk in the corner of my room. I don't have a blank background due to this. Will I still be allowed to write as my bed will show in the background? That is acceptable, but I must caution you. If you have a cluttered background um, behind you, the test platform will pick up this and it will advise you of this and it can be annoying. It is really in your interest to make sure you have a completely blank background behind you. Of course, if you have any prohibited item in view, cell phones, calculators, books, your test will be invalidated. So please make sure that your um, your test space is clear of any item that you're not permitted to have with you. Uh, I'm going to go to the last page. OK, it is a problem. Is it a problem if you have different hair on your ID photo um, from the actual face taken now? OK, our, our test platform software is very sensitive and it's pretty good at picking up the biometrics of your photograph. If for any reason um, it is unable to do so, the process goes to a manual verification and we will very easily be able to see that it is the same person. So don't worry about that. Um, just go through the process and if, uh, if you have to go to manual verification, select manual verification and so long as your picture and your ID picture are clear, it will be accepted. Can we delete the lockdown browser when we're done with the MBT? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can uninstall it from your device after you finish the test day. Of course, if you're planning to write for a second time, then you might just as well leave it on your machine. It's not going to interfere with it and it will only uh, come into effect when you press start from the test day. OK, I think that pretty much brings our session to a close. Um, we've had the full hour here. We will continue to try and answer some of your questions in the Q&A section. And I really would like to wish you the absolute best of luck with your MBTs. Um, I really do wish you the best with your future academic careers. And of course, do remember that if you have problems, you are always a, we are always able to help you either through our help desk or on the test day or while, while you're on the simulation through the chat function on the test platform. Thanks very much for attending this and goodbye.